Welcome to our service for the third Sunday in Lent. The Lord, our Redeemer, be with you, and also with you. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Please join in with the words in bold type. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments, Hang all the law and the prophets. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our confession, where we say sorry to God. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence, and faith. O God our Father, we come before you to seek your forgiveness for the times when we have failed you, and so we pray together. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. We keep a moment of silence before we say the collect together. Eternal God, give us insight to discover your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading today is from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Years ago, when life was normal, there used to be lots of jumble sales. You never seem to hear of them now, even before COVID-19. 
when I helped with scouts and when I was on the PTAs at the first and the middle school, they regularly held jumble sales and I always used to be there helping out. And I never ceased to be amazed at how one person's clutter was another person's treasure. What seemed to be a pile of useless stuff was to others quite worthy. On one occasion, I remember a lady filling her bags with loads of children's clothes and and it really puzzled me because I knew her husband had a very well-paid job, so I couldn't understand why she was buying lots of clothes from a jumble sale, not that it's anything to do with me or that I should question someone else's motives. But I do admit to being a little puzzled. Several weeks later, I learned that the clothes were for relatives in Eastern Europe. And each year, the family would fill their car to bursting point and travel across Europe to take the clothes and the goods to those who had very little. I'm ashamed to admit that until then, I wrote off much of the jumble as clutter. I wonder how many of us have done the same with people, written them off. From our Bible reading, it seems to me that many of the people of Corinth at that time, had written Jesus off. Corinth was a place of intellect and culture. It was a place of immorality and worship of Aphrodite. And it's said that the Temple of Aphrodite housed 2,000 priestesses. And when you learn that part of the pagan worship there entailed having relationships with priestesses, well, they were more like ladies of the night. A few years ago, Michael and I visited Corinth and we paid for an escorted tour and spent some time in an area where Paul is said to have addressed the crowds. High on the top of a nearby hill stood a ruin. And I asked the guide if that ruin was actually the temple of Aphrodite. Her reply, yes, but we don't like to talk about that. Did people from different culture write them off, I wonder? Consider them as useless. Many of the people who lived in Corinth put much store on wisdom. Could it be that those who had little schooling were dismissed as worthless? Just like the clutter at the jumble sale. How easily we can write people off. We can look at the outside of others instead of searching deeper beneath the surface, judging before we know what's underneath. Thankfully, God isn't like that. God has other ideas. God is able to use people in the most unexpected and surprising ways. As far as God is concerned, useless is a word that doesn't exist. Paul preached the good news to the people of Corinth. Paul proclaimed Jesus as Messiah, the Saviour of the world. And remember that many of the people of Corinth were exceptional scholars. To them, the cross was foolishness. It was useless. So why was the cross foolishness, useless to the people of Corinth? Well, think about it. How could a criminal, raised in an unschooled corner of the world like Nazareth, crucified on a rubbish dump outside the city walls of Jerusalem, possibly be a messiah. They'd written him off. To them, the cross was pointless, utter foolishness. And yet, look at the cross. As we walk with Christ this Lent, we shall soon travel from the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, through the garden at Gethsemane, through the desertion by all of his friends, including those close to him, through the trial, the mocking, the torture, the humiliation, and the death. And then we'll come to the most tremendous act in history, the resurrection. To some people, the cross might have seemed foolish, but we should never write off an act of God. To some, the cross might have seemed foolish, but Paul says that the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. The weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. To those who are being saved, the cross is the power of God, he says. God uses the foolishness of the cross to reinstate the kingdom of power and glory on earth. 
his kingdom. The message of the cross is not about clever words or subtle concepts. Christ died that we might live. Alleluia. In our Lenten reflections, may God open our eyes again to the heart of what it all means. May he help us communicate what really matters, the good news of new life in Christ, bought for us by him on that cross. Amen. Gracious God, we come before you affirming our faith in Jesus Christ, Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
And so we come to our prayers. To you, Lord, be praise and glory, for you went to the cross to give us the victory over death and hell. In you we are more than conquerors, for you have called us into eternal life. Lord, make us worthy of our calling, that we may serve you in love and peace. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you went willingly to the cross, bearing all our sins. Help us to remain faithful to you. And as we gain our strength from you, may we give light and hope to others. We pray for those who are wavering in faith, for those who are weak in spirit, and for those who have never known you. We pray for the joy and mission of the Church. Help those who are entrusted with that mission to do and say the right things in the furtherance of your Kingdom. We pray for our bishops Michael and Matthew, and all those entrusted with the Church's direction to follow faithfully the path that you have set before us. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. By going to the cross, you brought the hope of all the world. We pray for better relationships between nations, for a greater sense of belonging to one great family. We pray today for the United Nations, for the International Red Cross, and for all programmes that strive for peace. For the deepening of goodwill amongst all those who are at war, whether across borders or within. And at this time we are mindful of those areas in the Middle East, Syria, Iran, Iraq, the Gulf States, and for those in Africa, particularly Sudan and the Congo. We pray too for Myanmar. May all those put aside violence and strive for peace. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for all who, through good relationships, have shown your love. We pray for all whom we love and all those who love us. For those who have been a guide along the pathway, helping us to follow in your footsteps. And we also remember those who do not find their pathways easy. So give them the strength to follow you. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. We bring before you all those who have suffered at the hands of others, all refugees and homeless people, those dispossessed and those distraught for whatever reason. We pray for those afraid of any relationships, for all who can no longer trust anyone and those who cannot trust themselves. We pray for all who are ill, especially through this pandemic, and for their loved ones in their anxiety for them. We give thanks for the medics and technicians developing the vaccine to combat the virus. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who have been faithful to you and we pray for those who now rejoice in your love and peace in its all fullness. We remember all of those who we love and see no more. Meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. Bringing together all our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, we say together, Lord Jesus, thank you for the sacrifice you made for us all. Thank you for the cross that leads to eternal life. Thank you for your courage 
devotion and example. Breathe upon us your life-giving, strength-giving, joy-giving spirit, that we may be filled to overflowing and equipped to do your will. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As our service draws to an end, we have the final prayer and blessing. God of compassion, full of grace and truth, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have reconciled your people to yourself. As we follow his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love, this day and for always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>